Hello, and welcome to Boss Raid. <sighs> so I guess this is what my channel has come to. I'm reviewing... well, you just read the title. And you still clicked, so maybe we're both in the wrong. Just a little. But before you angrily close the video regretting your mistake and cursing my name, hear me out. I love the Game Boy Advance. Even these really bad semi-obscure games. It has a massive library, and for every amazing game that pushes the console to its limits, there are probably a hundred of just throwaway shovelware. But some, like the games I'm going to talk about today, are at least arguably notable, even if it's only to note their flaws. That's So Raven. That's So Raven was a Disney Channel sitcom starring Raven, Simone, uh, you know what, it's too tiring to say, but you can just read it there on the screen. And it was pretty dang popular, though I personally was never a big Disney Channel fan, my sister watched a lot of it, so I was at least aware of the show. The first game was released in 2004 and developed by Vicarious Visions. Yep, the same ones who worked on other such games as Spider-Man and Spider-Man 2 on the original Game Boy, Crash Nitro Kart, and Star Wars Jedi Knight 1 and 2, as well as many others you're probably familiar with. These, of course, are some of their more well-known titles, and though not every game in their development history has been top-tier quality, keep in mind the games I mentioned all came before this game. This flipping game. Okay, bad game is bad, we get it, so let's try to break it down as objectively as possible. First of all, it sucks. You play as Raven, you basically wander around dodging obstacles and talking to NPCs and occasionally collecting items. There is really not much more to say about actual gameplay than that, and that it sucks. As far as mechanics go, well, they attempted some. You have two main buttons, a run and a swing your purse button. Running feels a bit ice skatey as Raven will kind of slide around when turning or when coming to a stop. There's no jump, this doesn't have any kind of platformer elements, it's kind of just a side-scrolling game. It reminds me a little bit of Beavis and Butthead on the SNES, which itself isn't the greatest game, it's a goddamn masterpiece compared to this. The swing your purse button does just that, the only function this has is to repel incoming projectiles because sometimes enemies throw things at you. Sadly, you can't even damage enemies with their own deflected projectiles. You can collect water and perfume bottles floating around and you can use them, though you can only hold 20 of each at a time, that purse can only hold so much. They do the exact same thing, stun an enemy, making them unable to hurt you until you leave the room and come back. Why we need two items that do the same thing, I'll never know, though technically, while the perfume is a quick burst that requires getting up close, while the water you can drop on the floor in an enemy's path far away from it, making it less risky, let's be honest, that is far too much strategy for this game. You are informed early on by this enthralling NPC that you take damage by running into things or getting your clothes dirty. I had to reread that three times because I didn't think that's what he actually said. But the thing is, that's not really how it works. You take damage when you run into something, like trash, or when something hits you, like muffins or the other random things that enemies toss at you. And while you could argue that these things could cause dirty clothes, there's not some dirt mechanic that you have to be aware of. Damage happens when your hitbox collides with another, and that's it, and this guy is a liar. There are four worlds, I think, each based on an episode from the show, with five stages per world, and the goal is usually just to navigate the stages until you find the right NPC or until you collect certain items. Between each level, there are cutscenes with horribly pixelated stills taken from the show. I know I'm blowing them up here, but they don't even look good scaled down to their proper resolution. The story is just trash, high school drama told by poorly written text. I don't believe that even if I had any interest in the show, would I care about any of these characters or their issues. I assume these are plot points from the show, which don't translate well into game form. Would it really have been so hard to come up with an original story, or just drop the still image cutscenes altogether? Because I really feel that they were done so poorly that they detract from the game. Stage 3 introduces these hall monitor sections, and now it's a sneaking game. Raven. Seriously, these are a drag. They're boring, as you're basically walking slowly to gauge their path and then standing there doing nothing until they pass. Excellent gameplay there, guys. Not only can you not use perfume or water to stop them, if you get caught, they send you back to the start of the room and you have to do the slow process all over. There are far too many of these sections and they go on for far too long. These sections made me just want to stop playing completely, but I pushed on for you guys. The last stage of every world changes things up by taking a step back. Like this one that looks like a game made by some kid who is just learning to program in Python. The graphics are a mixed bag from so-so to just bad. I mean, look at Raven's face on the health bar. Those eyes just stare into your soul. 
Tile sets are reused, like 90% of the game takes place using the same school background. Levels are reused a lot as well, and it probably goes without saying, but the music isn't great either. I've heard worse, but it loops too much and there's very little variety. The music is credited to Shin In, which is a German-based music outsourcing company. Sound effects are far and few between, and also not very good. And here, on the very last level of the game, the audience cheers sounds more like they're screaming for their lives. <laughs> to add a bit of challenge, but mostly to be done with it as quickly as possible, I turned my playthrough into a blind speedrun. It took me just over an hour, which is far, far, far more time than anyone should spend with this game. Anyone who was paid to develop this game should feel bad, because they didn't earn that money, though I can't imagine they were paid much to begin with. I mean, just look at this game over screen. Do I really need to say anything else? For some reason that I sincerely cannot explain, a sequel was made. My best guess is something like this. Hey, we need to make another That's So Raven game. Squeeze a few bucks out of some idiot kids and their parents. I don't need to see the future to tell you it'll probably be just as bad as the first game. Oh, is that so? Raven? Only a year later, in 2005, That's So Ragin' 2, Supernatural Style, hit the shelves. This time, development was left to Artificial Mind and Movement, who would later change their name to Behavior Entertainment. I was unfamiliar with this developer, though they have a somewhat intriguing history, perhaps worth a delve into in another video someday. They seem to not have a whole lot of games developed solely by them, at least not after their name change. For example, more recently, they worked on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 versions of Shadow of Mordor and the Switch version of Borderlands the pre-sequel. They do seem to be the sole developers of Fallout Shelter though, and they do have some originals such as Dead by Daylight, but even today they typically work with licensed IPs. And back then, if it was Disney on the GBA, there's a good chance it was AM and M. This time there is a jump button, as the game is now primarily a platformer. A very slow-moving platformer. Right from the beginning, there are pretty tight jumps, you almost have to buffer your jumps a bit to make them. And there's fall damage, which I think is totally unnecessary. There's honestly a lot less to say about this game, it's a pretty standard, below-average platformer. Hitboxes are terrible, the jump arc and movement in general is bad, and it just feels slow and clunky. There is a run feature, but there is a stamina bar for some reason, so you can't run for very long, and it's usually not a good idea to just run because you'll either have to stop to try to avoid an enemy or to make a jump. Though you do have to sometimes run to make certain jumps, usually from a small platform. This time around, you can collect and throw pies at enemies to temporarily neutralize them. Yes, pies. Because that totally fits thematically. But I also figured out that you can negate damage for most enemies if you jump through them right before they would deal damage. That's probably not intentional. There's also a crouching and rolling mechanic that can help you get past certain obstacles, or not, depending on whether the game wants to cooperate. There's even a rarely used ledge grab mechanic that only works on certain ledges. The goal of each stage is to, again, collect things, but there's usually a specific objective, usually just navigating to the correct location and or talking to a specific NPC. Sometimes it can be confusing as to where to go, and sometimes it's unclear what can and can't be used as a platform. I got stuck on the second level for a long time, and when I tried looking up playthrough videos to help me out, most of them didn't seem to progress past that stage either. And when I finally did figure it out, it was of course something extremely simple, a ledge you need to grab that looks like it's part of the background. The graphics are better, but still just meh. It still uses real life images from the show, but this time just as avatars during dialogue. These images are much better than before. There are also fashion sequences in between which don't really do much, but you can't have a girls game without fashion. There is a kind of neat thing where you can collect and use different outfits in the level to bypass enemies or access new areas. Overall, this is much more game-like than the previous title, yet still outstandingly low effort. Raven also says snap or oh snap a lot in the exclamation. Is that how she talks in the show? Actually, you know what, never mind, I don't care. However, the music here is surprisingly not bad. Not to say that it's amazing, but very listenable. Once again, the music was done by Shin In, and upon closer look at this company, that is, a quick Google search, Manfred Linzer is the CEO and main composer for Shin In. Linzer, of course, has worked on other Vicarious Vision games in the past, including the previous That's So Raven title, even though this one was by a different developer. Also, Shin In develops games as well, so maybe we'll take a closer look at this company later. Regardless, this is closer to the Linzer quality that I'm used to, and about 50 times better than the previous game's soundtrack. 
I only had the patience to make it about halfway through stage 3-1. The biggest problem here is how obscure the correct path forward is. You often have to comb over the entire level multiple times before finding that one little thing that you missed that honestly shouldn't have been so easily missable in the first place. The gameplay is just not worth it when you hit yet another dead end and realize you've just spent the last 10 minutes exploring the same area to be no further along than you were before and now you have to start combing over the level yet again. And after this had happened to me several times too many, I decided I had enough. Sadly, I'll never find out the conclusion of Raven's date or whatever, but that's something I'll have to learn to live with. But wait, there's more! Is that so, Raven? Why do we just write off the most inane garbage as okay because it's made for children? Aren't children precious? Shouldn't we be feeding their growing minds with wondrous and quality content? Instead, companies view children as a quick and easy way to make some low effort cash, and we end up with games like that's So Raven, Psychic on the Scene for the Nintendo DS. This was developed by a small team called Handheld Games, which worked on a few other titles, but ultimately shut down in 2009, and according to Wikipedia, now works on app development for Costco Wholesale Corporation, which is an interesting jump. This is the kind of game that you pause, heave a heavy sigh, and wonder what you're doing with your life, all before even turning it on. I would best describe it as a 3D adventure game with point-and-click elements. An extremely rough comparison might be to games like Grim Fandango, but don't expect anything close to that depth of gameplay here. The fun starts even before the game begins, as we wait for the show curtain to drop, revealing... Ugh. Perhaps the worst representation of Raven thus far, and that's really saying something. Oh, and if you accidentally back out of the menu screen, you have to wait for this painfully slow sequence to happen all over again with no way to skip it. We're off to a great start already. You take control of Raven and wander around the pre-rendered low-poly world. You can examine the various furnishings of this world simply by walking up to them and pressing A. There will also be a huge on-screen indicator on both screens letting you know when an object is examinable. When you examine an object, usually a close-up picture will appear on the bottom screen with more detail and a short description of what you can do next. For example, if we search this vanity, it might tell us that the left drawer is unlocked. A nice touch is that you actually have to tap the left drawer in the picture, you can't just tap anywhere. When you tap on the drawer, it opens on the picture only. Then we might see inside the drawer, as the text now tells us, there is a cell phone in the drawer, which we can then tap on to add to our inventory. This is a nice little feature. My only real complaint is that it's already too easy even without the text telling us what we're supposed to do. There are also fashion elements in this game as well that have in-game use and are not just there because girls game. You can find disguises, sometimes even having to sew them yourself through this just terrible stylus minigame. There are tons of such minigames sprinkled throughout the levels. In each stage, you'll typically need to walk around exploring and talking to NPCs to find three clothing items, to make a disguise, to enter otherwise inaccessible areas. Once in these areas, it's even more exploration and NPC talking to until you eventually find the right item and or NPC, and then you go to the next stage. There's an objective log that you can bring up at any time if you forget what you need to do, or felt that remembering was just wasting precious brain resources and decided not to commit it to memory. There are also a few side quests that you can do if you really want to. These reward money, which you can spend at the mall. You can, of course, buy outfits for Raven, though besides using disguises, you can completely ignore the rest of the fashion stuff. Also, a run button would have been nice. The story, although still not very compelling, is much more coherent and straightforward and works better within its game than the previous two titles, which is good as this is somewhat of a mystery game, so at least they kind of got that right. Kind of. Graphically, it's okay. I actually kind of like the pre-rendered backgrounds. They remind me of the PlayStation Final Fantasies a bit, though much lower quality. The character models are all disgusting, though. The levels are smaller and not nearly as repetitive, but after three games, the mall and school settings have more than worn out their welcome. There are some voice clips this time, though most of the dialogue is done through text. The music isn't great. I would say it's bad, but not terrible. And the voice clips that play every time Raven enters or exits an NPC conversation gets old really quick. The game also utilizes the DS's microphone, or as I like to call it, a fifth button with extra steps. Outside of talking to NPCs, searching objects, clicking on things, and the occasional minigame, there is very little else this game offers. Gameplay is slow, boring, and overall very easy. And at one point I actually had to answer a series of English exam questions to progress. Riveting. I was surprised a bit, as the game is better than I was expecting, but I still don't think anyone besides younger fans of the series would have a good time playing. I made it just over an hour into this one, and I feel like I deserve an award just for that. So there it is. That's so Raven in video games. 
I didn't have high expectations and the series already had an uphill battle to fight belonging to a franchise that I had no interest in. In fact, I'm not really sure what compelled me to even make this video in the first place. That's it for this review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Boss Raid. Thank you.